Hello, everybody. I have the great pleasure of being here with Nico House, former Truth Against the Machine journalist, and also um, just a, a friend of mine and a guy who's building um, his own YouTube channel. It's doing extremely well. He, his journalism, his work, uh, I'm a big fan of everything he's done. Before I get started, I want to explain a couple of things. First and foremost, I have no idea if Jordan Sheridan is innocent or guilty. My goal interviewing jo uh, Christian Choklis, Summer Swan, Taylor Raines, Ruel James, um, Tara Lee Griffin, and now Nico House. And by the way, after Nico House, I will have the great pleasure of interviewing uh, two journalists with a lot of knowledge, a great deal of knowledge um, about everything that's taken place. I will be interviewing Cindy Gomez-Shemp, who has an amazing show of her own and spent well over one hour yesterday evening really detailing every aspect of the sexual assault allegations against the former Truth Against the Machine founder and TYT employee. So Cindy Gomez-Shemp will be on at 6.30 p.m. And Summer Swan, I'll have the great pl uh, pr pleasure of speaking to former Truth Against the Machine journalist Summer Swan at 7.30 p.m. Pacific times all this evening. So just for YouTube to make sure again, I am covering a story and then commenting, giving my two cents based on what I know, just like the Young Turks and Cenk Uger does with Roy Moore, with Harvey Weinstein, with all the other um, people in the news regarding this type of topic, except one difference is that they didn't write a Medium article. So Jordan Sheridan wrote a Medium article, which then ushered in everything, basically outing um, a woman who he thought would accuse him, and then eventually we saw the Tim Black interview. So, yeah, let, if you don't, yeah. if you don't so Nico, mind so, yeah, so <laughs> I, I just had to interject get, just briefly. Yeah. <laughs> if you so, have an issue with journalists covering Jordan Sheridan, specifically an issue with myself, Tim Black, or AJ covering him. Well, first of all, covering this story, when a prominent uh, uh, journalist does, has an allegation like this, if a prominent figure in politics has an allegation like this, whether or not it's been proven true or false yet, something is unethical, just like what we saw today with, uh, man, what is, what is his name? So uh, the senator from the one I just got accused of showing up at a staff meeting, his underwear, <laughs> he got accused of showing up and he uh, stepped down from the Judiciary Committee from his position. But the story is still talking about all the unethical things he did that have caused him to step down from that. Whether or not he is guilty yet, up for people who are, we, he needs due process. Absolutely. And if Carly wants to ch press charges, that's what will happen. Hopefully he'll get his due process. But unethical, unlawful are three different things. And we need to stop conflating the three as if, you know, being unethical relies on something being, if, for example, there are a lot of things that people do that are illegal that are perfectly ethical. I will break rules to help my family. I will break the law to help my friends. I, but does that mean because I broke the law to help my friend, if maybe the law is unethical, not my action. The whole due process thing, like, bro, it's not about due process. You're trying to figure out a way to exonerate your savior, you know. There's no other talking points. But the truth of the matter is, H.A. is perfectly right. TYT has made a living. That is how their entire following got started. That is how their entire following grew during the election the, uh, in 2016 and 2015. Because they just talked shit about other journalists. That's all they did. C CNN says this. MSNBC does this. Joy Reid did it. Like, that's what they've done. They've now become mainstream media. And they don't, now they rely on mainstream media sources to to convey the, you know, the authenticity, the integrity of their stories. But it's, it's nonsense. If you're complaining about three journalists covering an, a journalist who, you know, fell from the heavens, then that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> I know, I, and I agree with you, and I thank you for, <laughs> for, for getting that, you know, out of the way. And give me, I guess, let, like, 
there's probably going to be a lot of people and there was already just in a couple of minutes uh like 200 people watching right now and i'm sure there'll be a lot more well, uh, people. within the next like 20 30 minutes but mike can you tell everybody your history with truth against the machine how you met jordan so i was actually one of the first people that jordan hired because well he said i want to i want to use your talents and you know, amplify your audience and make it bigger, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, the same thing that he told to the females, which is why whenever Tim Black, now I'm listening to this, I was actually messaging, well, actually, I believe it was. I was messaging a, a couple of members from Truth Against the Machine. On top of that, I'm like texting my friends who know Jordan personally, texting two females who had an intimate relationship with Jordan. And they're all like, wow, he uses the exact same line on everyone like bow down at his feet the the when i was with truth against the machine it was a pretty cool experience like just because of the people that we i eventually end up working with and i still talk to um i encouraged i'm glad that jordan did what he or at least tried to put on the facade of doing what he did because it was important to a lot of people who otherwise would not have had a platform um jank said he was going to do with that two million dollars that he had raised forever ago um, and he actually did not invest any money into it. Uh, Jordan supposedly spent his own money. Great, whatever. Now, the issue was, is that whenever I did get hired to Truth Against the Machine, I was homeless because I was transitioning from a major move. Um, as you all know, I got arrested on South Beach for, well, maybe, maybe you don't know, but I got arrested on South Beach for not having an ID, a state ID on me, which the case eventually got dropped and the cop got in trouble. Uh, but you know, so and I had, but I, you know, when you get arrested, it, you don't have to be in jail for it to ruin your life because a lot of things come when you have to get bailed out, you have to make court dates, you have to do a lot of things to, to. So, I was homeless, and Jordan was upset at the fact that uh, um, I couldn't go chase stories because I was too busy trying to chase money to survive and eat, um, which was a little pompous of him, but. I didn't really care. I mean, I cared because his, re his rationality just didn't make any sense to me. It was very selfish thinking. It was, you can't do what I want you to do right now, and therefore, um, you know, you can't be part of this. And the, like, it's, I was supposed, and I actually had a very detailed conversation with him about me maintaining my platform. I'm like, look, I'll do this, but understand that my show comes first, because I have my patrons, I have people who watch my show regularly, weekly, so that is always gonna come first trying to do because that's important to me and so he said he understood that so that the night he fired me i coincidentally the night he fired me at the exact same time he had well nico rate. what like um how did you how many stories did you run or did you cover for... i did about two or three because okay. because truth against the machine hadn't existed for that long at that point but i did about two or three um okay. not writing just strictly video um but that same night that I got fired, TYT had, oh, the DNC fraud lawsuit. That same night, you know, the, the video where they lied, pretty much they didn't try to reach out to Jared Liz or myself about it. They just came up with some imaginary scenario and it had nothing to do with the transcripts. The only thing about the transcripts that they mentioned are, is what Jordan, but he didn't really break it. We, we broke it earlier, but Jordan claimed he broke it. But that essentially us, remember, you and I reporting on that and Tim reporting on this was partially three-fourths of what led Jordan to uh, make those videos about us. Can you elaborate, Nico? Because I remember um, you were talking about early on a lot of the issues that we're talking about regarding um, Hard Bastard is really focused and rightfully so. And I, I was on Hard Bastard's channel yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, Regarding Truth Against the Machine donations, TYT donations. Yeah, that's what I was about to say next. That's yeah, I'm sorry. About I'm sorry. To say <laughs> next. And it's, no, and it's because it was in, this, in that exact same night, because it's all hell broke loose that night, as you remember. But in that same night, I did another live video about the $2 million that TYT had raised, and it didn't go to anybody that it supposedly was going to go to. And this wasn't as if I was making this up off the top of my head. Remember, in the beginning of that video that Jordan says, he even admits, oh, me and Nico are friends. I actually like, I really like Nico. Like, 
So I know him. We texted. I knew he, he did not like Nomiki. He does not consider Nomiki an actual journalist. He was pissed off when they hired her. He did not like what they were doing with the money. He does not like Jank. He did not like working for TYT. And it's why when Carly echoed this in her video, Paula echoed this in her Medium article about him, you know, and this has been a pattern of people saying the exact same thing in different ways, and we don't talk to each other. I've never talked to Carly in my life. I've never talked to Paula in my life. So clearly there's a pattern established here. But because Jordan's brand means more to him, he was willing to lie and assassinate our character because he does know that for a fact, H.A. Goodman's following can hurt TYT. He does know for a fact that Tim Black's following can absolutely kill him because he has a lot of prog almost exclusively progressives following him. And, you know, he has a mixed crowd, but it's almost exclusively progressives, whereas yours is more so 50-50. Now, with me, he just saw me as competition. It was very evident in the way I me. Mean, like, Jordan has never interviewed me one-on-one, -on -one, but he wanted me to go on his show quick, fast, and in a hurry. Or right, he wanted me to be part of his team quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, because he wanted me to grow his following and grow support for the channel, which I did. Um, you know, he never, he never wanted to sacrifice or lose his brand. And as you and I and Tim and several others have always discussed, there is no Jordan Sheraton without TYT connected to it. And he knew that. Uh, and just like now, he was very, very reactionary. And weirdly enough, just like then, it's about the $2 million. Oh, when you show my credit card statements from the TYT credit card, make sure you put it side by side with the $2 million you use to hire four journalists. And if you all remember, Jordan, because y'all know I keep the screenshots, I always keep the receipts, was complaining in the videos, was complaining on Twitter, on YouTube, making dozens of Facebook posts, saying that I was lying about that texting me making excuses as to why it was okay that tyt had raised that money and paid whoever the hell they wanted to pay which wasn't after he already expressed to me that he had it he took issue with how they, what, what they were doing with the money so on in public he's trying to pretend to be one person behind the scenes he pretends to be somebody else completely and totally different and it's it's, I, it's like it's troubling to me how many people have not been able to see that, have, that, have not been able to dichotomize Jordan the progressive and Jordan the real Jordan, you know? And so it was easier for me to lean towards believing Carly, uh, you know, believing Taylor, even Z Cohen, who is Jordan's friend. Jo Z Cohen tried, like, posted on the internet trying to defend Jordan. You know, irrationally so. And Z, Z, Cohen, Z Cohen is siding with Carly, right? Yeah. I mean, this woman, and Z was, well, I'll tell you, she was on Jordan's side during that whole argument. I mean, just like I it was to a disgusting extent. And of course, right after that, Jordan got her a job. She was working for Truth Against the Machine and TYT simultaneously. So it was a lot of, a lot of you know, which Let's seemed go, to be the case, to ask you, you know, like, with the females. What's up? If somebody were to ask you, give me two or three examples of how funds, in your view, this is your viewpoint, yeah. how funds were mismanaged at Truth Against the Machine or TYT, what would, what would two of the three reasons for funds being mismanaged? What would, be those be the, what would be those reasons? So with Truth Against the Machine, I tried to stay out of the funds stuff. Like I tried to because I knew that they didn't raise that much money. I knew it was going to be an issue. Like if I even asked about how I'm gonna come like, you're gonna you're gonna have me run around the city, bro. You need to cut me off something. <laughs> Gas money ain't free. It's 2018. So or at least about to be. But in all seriousness, now with TYT, I know how the money was mismatched. They they own Miki Const, who is the, the falsely acclaimed youngest woman to run for U.S. House of Representatives or U.S. Senate. She never filed, by the way. She actually never filed to run. She just claimed she was going to run, and now she uses it on her website saying that she ran. I digress. But Nomiki is not an analyst. She's not a reporter. She's never worked, like, involved in politics, but she was nobody but a Twitter head who complained a lot. And it's, 
no offense to anybody out there, you know, do what you got to do. But white women who complain a lot and are progressive, you know, draw a lot of Twitter followers. And it's just a thing. Like, it's cool. It's whatever. It's their demographic. So that's why he brought her on. Then, you know, extraordinaire, Sean King. He, somebody, somebody claimed that Sean King went on there for free. Uh, I don't think he was getting paid as much he should have been paid, which is why we don't see him that often on there. But um, then he brought on Michael Tracy. So he brought on a bunch of people three people. I can't remember who the last person was, um, but he brought on four people total and then supposedly gave Jordan a raise. Now, I don't know if you ever saw the video, but I did watch it because I was very curious about that. I'm like, $2 million, bro. Who are you trying to hire? He said, we're going to hire a bunch of progressive journalists, independent journalists and investigative journalists and send them across the country. That's not what happened. That's, that's not what happened. You hired, put her on the unity committee for the Democrats, which is a fucking huge conflict of interest. You're a media personality. You should not be on the unity committee. And it's not like you're a small media personality either. Reporting for a major media conglomerate. You get what I'm saying? So it was clear so you're that saying, there was are you a saying goal that this... of just trying to, to use social media personalities who are already influential and were already obedient the establishment line, not upsetting them too much, but pretending that they're challenging the establishment, but sticking to the safe issues. Oh, That's absolutely. what he wanted to do. No, I agree with you. So the $2 million raised, my question is, doesn't the Young Turks make money, make a profit already? Like, why did they have to get donations? Um, actually, I asked that. <laughs> I was confused. I was like, if I'm Jake, who is worth like 7 or $8 million, if I really want to bring on progressive journalists, because this is, I don't know, I mean, of course we know this is his assets and everything combined, but I would spend, if that was, if it was that important to me because of progress, because he pretends like the progressive movement was just that important to him. I would spend 50000 to 100000 of my own dollars to bring on another progressive journalist. I would absolutely do that. I feel like- well, But I'm just talking about what TYT, TYT is a for-profit venture. I mean, it's, it's a company, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. So my thing is, don't they have enough money? They, yeah, they did. I mean, they have they a three have million money. subscriber. They had money. No, yeah, I, yeah. I totally agree with you. They had money. It was they used Jordan as a fundraising tool. They used what happened in Standing Rock to profit and bring on more people from the neoliberal echo chamber. Like that's what they did. <laughs> like except for Michael Tracy, he's a little. Uh, he's more progressive and he challenges Jenk a lot. Uh, which is probably why he doesn't get much TV time anymore. But, um, you know, it's, it's corruption, and, and Jordan was part of it. As, as long as and, he was okay with it, as long as they protected his brand. And I find, it very, I find it very interesting that what you brought up, which is why Jordan attacked you, Jordan is now bringing up <laughs> with... with yeah. So now yeah. he's he's saying release hashtag release the the, the receipts or whatever, and he's he brought up the two million. Right, irony, now he irony, brought it up and he attacked irony. me. He attacked me for it. He attacked. I, I'm a demagogue, you know. That's what he, you know. I'm just reporting for clicks, trying to what he say. He said that we didn't actually. I think his exact words were, uh, "These are people who are trying to silence debate," and that's not actually what we said. What we said is. Why aren't you, if you are, Jordan in, in particular, but if you are a progressive media outlet, they're talking about, hey, you talked about the DNC fraud lawsuit and didn't have any of us on. And it's, and it's not like you didn't know who I was. You mentioned, like Jenk mentioned me in a tweet with you and Tim Black. Like, it's not like I wasn't working for your best reporter at the time. And he, know who, he knew who I was. Like, they saw me, they had their staff at Joe Stalin's rally in, 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 in um, uh, Detroit, and I was a surrogate for her, and I spoke there. They saw me. They know who I am. They know how to get in touch with me. They know that, that Jordan can get in touch with Jared and Elizabeth because he had interviewed, interviewed them before about the topic. And he even had an interview on his channel for TYT Politics about the topic. So what and why would you then do such a shitty job covering the DNC fraud lawsuit? Because... They are financially invested in the success of the Democratic Party via the Justice Democrats, via this big $20 million, you know, influx of money they got from what, a top three Clinton donor, a top three Democratic Party donor, via even the brand new Congress. Like, 
that is way too much investment in the success of one party. If you're worried about the success of one party, that means you are not worried about creating a, a, a necessary apparatus for third party success. Like, rid of the idea that 10, somebody should get 10% of the polls that are totally, you know, ridiculous at this point. They're extremely hard to predict anything nowadays within a legitimate mar margin of error because of the corruption. So, like, Get rid of that, you know, get rid of the fact that third party candidates have to get so many signatures before they can run. Those are things that unbiased would do, you know, not, oh, let's focus on the success of candidates to the point. And they don't know what they're doing because I know in Chicago, I know that they're doing it in Florida right now and in New York and in Texas, they're running four progressive candidates against sitting progressive candidates. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's that's just, crazy. You know, just because they want to, because they're being lazy and they're concentrating on big cities that they think will be easy to win if they just spend the money. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not real work. It, you know, it's, it's it, it, not, don't get me wrong. I have no, I have no problem with Kyle Kalinske at all. I think that Kyle's idea was initially noble. And when it was just Kyle, I didn't actually have as much of a problem with it. What became a problem in when, is when Jank kind of hijacked it and put TYT's entire weight behind it and then like dragged in Rokana at the same time and why would you want like a bad like, guy but you know it, go ahead go ahead yeah no i was gonna say like why would you why would jank uger and the young turks be the experts on elections when their election night meltdown is like legendary on youtube yeah oh man it's hilarious they're not experts this is that's they have no they don't know how politics work good guy watching jank debate ben shapiro was the funniest thing I have ever seen because Jake has no idea how things work. Ben Shapiro is um, to rhetoric and gaslighting and, you know, using conservative talking points to rally the troops behind him. That's like what he does. Actually, I really dislike Ben Shapiro's entire, like, he does. And it was just so easy to, 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 like, tear through if you know what you're talking about. But then doesn't. But Ben Shapiro does this thing where, he says these bold statements, pretends to be super intellectual, uses a bunch of big words. He affirms his statement by using a circular argument. He's like, you know the problem with socialism? The problem with socialism is that you redistribute funds from the excess and give the people who need it. I'm like, no, you just gave a definition of socialism. It was just, once again, easy to defend. But Jenk got destroyed and obliterated during Politicon. <laughs> Oh, what the hell he's talking about and his like his idiocy shines through so often i don't not only him jake anna like they don't know shit they don't understand the realities of politics i think very 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 recently nomiki is finally starting to see the democratic party for what it is um she still tried to pedal the russia thing but my thing is like it's like tyt is just stop giving giving a shit about actually substantiating their claims, looking for legitimate evidence, digging deeper for the story, doing investigative journalism. I mean, all of them, they've just stopped. I don't, it's funny that, you know, Jordan's saying, oh, be, this is how big he sees himself. Uh, what do you say, progressive journalism dies because he gets fired? I think you mean that much to progressive journalism yeah. that because you get fired, everybody else is just, oh, God, let's just give up, guys. If, if journal, if, if well, Nico, there, there was one tweet comparing him to Emmett Till. Yeah, um, yeah, man, look, <laughs> I, I, I did a long talk about that on my show the other night. The fact that he retweeted it. it was, he didn't tweet it, to be clear, but he retweeted it. But not only did he retweet it once, but he went back. So he wanted to let everybody know, I absolutely didn't mean to retweet this. It was not an accident. I didn't mean to press the heart button. I didn't mean to just favorite it. I wanted you all to know I feel the exact same way. And I haven't tweeted in three days, but this is the tweet I'm going to retweet. Clearly, myself, who literally just tried to exert my dominance and power, you know, because of my position and status, black kid who was lied on and got lynched for it. It's disgusting that he thought that it was comparable, but it, once again, it lets you know where he is at psychologically. He is not a stable person. He is not a confident person. He pretends to be confident, and he does this thing where he always says, I'm going to, be, I'm going to shoot it straight. I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an honest person, and usually, bullshit, almost 99% of the time, <laughs> you know? 
like with uh he was interviewing Tim Black, said the same thing. I'm an honest person. I mistook Tim Black. No, he didn't. No, you didn't. He didn't mistake. You didn't mistake him. Like you, you went, you said Tim Black, and then requalified the fact that we were separate because you said, and hey, Nico's my friend. I really like him, actually. Like you separate us, like, <laughs> and then you went and explained. Like, but here's the crazy shit. And now people are like, you can't just move on and get over it. And the reason why is because once again, the people who are just trying to, to say move on, get over it, and his integrity. Don't know him. How are you going to argue with me, Ali, or Paula, or Ruel, or even Zach Holler? Like, we know him. We've interacted with him. We've seen his pattern of behavior, and we've all recognized that it is dangerous enough that we need to speak on it because it is becoming, uh, you know, it's just becoming toxic in the movement that he's been able to get away with it for this long. I know, like, you know how bad it is? Um, uh, holy crap, I can't remember. Chelsea Lyons, there you go. She is a convicted misdemeanor. Not, you know, she did a couple of things, a little here and there. And, you know, like, everybody makes mistakes when they're kids. It's not one of those kind of fellas, okay, ladies and gentlemen. This is... She was extradited back from Mexico on felony drug charges. Extradited from Mexico back to the U.S. Now, you got to be pretty goddamn important to be extradited back into the U.S. But here's what's crazy about all of this. She's never actually served any major time for any of these charges, and she's actually still eligible to vote. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about this on my show tomorrow night. But this is a woman who clearly has an issue. She like abandoned her kids to run around the country and like essentially try to pretend like they didn't exist, like she d isn't still married, like she doesn't have a husband, like she didn't have a boyfriend before she started sleeping with Jordan. Then because and Jordan like having a convenient woman that he could, you know, do whatever with, with whoever, and know she would keep quiet about it. Nobody noticed the fact that Chelsea had no money but managed to follow Jordan around the country and then all of a sudden she just ended up on Truth Against the Machine. Why? Once again, I'm not judging anyone based off of having a felony or having a past. But perspective, because this isn't like bad happened as Chelsea was traveling around. You all remember Chelsea is a very dangerous person. And Jordan kept her around. Chelsea pretended as if she had no idea who I was when I met her at the People Summit outside of the club or excuse me outside of a bar uh, it was a fun bar i wish i could remember the name but it was with it was myself i was with uh beth lamb hirsch med uh and a couple of other people chelsea walks up to me like oh hi how are you i'm like hi and she's like oh what's your name like and nobody knows this, so this is actually an exclusive right now. The information you're getting is exclusive right now. I haven't even done my show about it yet. Sleeping with Jordan. She didn't know I knew she had been sleeping with Jordan since Standing Rock. She didn't know I knew that Jordan had talked, like, they, I know how Jordan is. He talks about everybody to everybody he's sleeping with. So I knew you. Like, I know. I've seen you tagged in my post. I've seen, like, to pretend like you don't know who I am made me immediately suspicious. Chelsea was like not, she was at the People Summit. No idea how she got there. No idea who paid for it. Apparently that was not the case. Don't know how she got there. She did not talk to Jordan the entire time she was there. Because they played her in for, they played her video for Truth Against the Machine, believe it or not, in the background at TYT's booth. But she acted like she had no idea what TYT was or Truth Against the Machine. Nico, let me now remember. Ask a question. What? What? Um, when you say that she's a convicted felon, did is this information public? Like you can go ahead and I oh, know. Oh, I'm can... going to post all. I have everything. I've had this stuff for months, but I didn't want. I wanted to wait until, well, until something like this happened. Because if I just started ripping into random people, you know, 
we're divisive if we do that. So this is this is public. This is obviously if some if anyone in America is a convicted felon, it's public knowledge. Yeah, something that Tyt and Jordan Sherry can get can easily get access to. You know, it's once again this isn't this what if you know it like. Talk to any lawyer or anybody who's been in a, a, a police, you know, or a, in law enforcement. You get that many convict, you get that many felonies charged this that many times and haven't served more than like two or three months, and like they're constantly getting knocked down. You know, somebody is footing the bill for you. She's already been implicated in this whole Standing Rock situation, where and a few other people, their names were redacted in a really incriminating article saying that 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 potentially they had something to do with the the nonsense that was going on out there like they were trying to essentially deter the movement same thing in flint i'm sure that you've heard and a lot of other people have heard jordan sheraton chelsea Lyons, and a few other people are not welcome back in flint because apparently chelsea has been accused of stealing thousands and thousands of dollars from somebody and try to leave in the middle of the night and got caught yep got the screenshots for that too like i said all that's coming tomorrow Tomorrow night on my channel, make sure you subscribe so you can watch it, um, is reality. You know, this is, this is the type of person that Jordan is. He was willing to keep her around just so he can have with. And once again, his little hookup, he tried to bring on to his team so, they can, so he can have control over them and what they do. And by the way, just, just to clarify, the... What you're saying fits a narrative that I've heard from Christian Chocolis, Rowell James, uh, Summer Swan, ta- uh, Taylor Raines, Tara Lee Griffin. So five people, you're the sixth person, and the same narrative was repeated uh, yesterday evening. In a, in a really brilliant, brilliant um, segment by Cindy Gomez-Shemp. So mm-hmm. that's six, Cindy Gomez-Shemp is the seventh person I'll be interviewing. And, I mean, this is not just for the audience. This is also for anyone watching from YouTube to TYT to um, anybody new to this story. Everything you're saying has in one way or another been bolstered by the testimony of numerous other people i will have the seventh person and who by the way by the way in case people are wondering i have not watched any of h.a goodman's interviews because i did not want me to be i did not want my story to be influenced by theirs in any way whatsoever outside of just the general knowledge that we all have because notice that just watching carly and black that i'm like wow this story sounds oddly familiar because it's a pattern this isn't like Bill Cosby pattern people where everybody's like, he gave me a pill. Like that's, that's like oversimplified. Like a lot of people said that this was a, he gave me, this was a psychological breakdown of people. And it's a, it was a pattern of narcissism, a pattern of being a control freak, a pattern of uh, bad business practices, bad employee relationships, um, and just overall ineptitude when it came, came to how to deal with people he was working with and when, when it's appropriate and when it's not appropriate to say certain things, behave a certain way. Um, and it's very, very likely that, I mean, cause I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a straight shooter, AJ. Okay. I like to keep, I like to be honest. Okay. So, uh, uh, very, very fucking dangerous. I can't put my exact, finger on it the exact but i'm i will tell you this <laughs> so while we're at it so you know ed higgins right <laughs> hey your face is up a little bit yeah chelsea and ed used to have sex at standing rock oh her and jordan were still intimate jordan and ed higgins actually had beef for a while it was low-key only people went to standing rock you know like a little standing rock little love triangle they had there weirdest thing i have ever seen because you're like yeah they're both dicks but Jordan, i mean after I'm my like, I'll tell you, after my interview with Jordan. josh long my god that whole standing rock that i mean what happened to kathleen bennett that. yeah what happened to kathleen bennett and then uh 
just the infiltration by wh whether it's Tiger Swan or my God, I mean that and that situation. Was there were so many bad people involved in everything. Do you know whenever I called Wesley Clark Jr. because he told me to call him, I was like, "Yo, what's going on, man?" He said, "Tyt are liars." Because he ain't gone. This is before he went on a public Twitter rant. I don't know if you remember that. He like Tyt are liars. They took my story. They twisted it for their own good. They took. They they missed my words. They they. I mean, they tried to make his story fit their narrative. It this, was so this, weird to this me whole that thing, she, she was I mean, talking with. It was weird. Here's what was what was weird about it. If nobody really looked at it from that perspective, because I follow like I was friends with Jordan. I knew Ed because of other things that have happened with Ed. And to a lot of people behind the scenes, I'm very active in my progressive community because I love you all and I love hearing your stories. And if I can help, I will help. So I, hear, I heard a lot of stories about Ed. But one thing that was prominent was at least at that time period, Ed was a very public figure at Standing Rock. If you recall, that's how he was being portrayed. So she goes out there, Ed. Jordan becomes like the guy, right? After his reporting, all of a sudden she's with Jordan. Or excuse me, she came with Jordan first, then she went and slept with Ed, then she went back to Jordan. I'm not joking. This is not a joke. My, my, thing, my thing is that after talking to Josh Long, why TYT would not cover the Kathleen Bennett story, I find that very, very suspicious. A lot of stories they didn't cover. There was a lot of stories they didn't cover there. And another thing that people didn't realize, if you're wondering where, because I will say this, Ed, our Ed was doing a pretty good job of reporting when things like the crazy stuff was going down. Um, a lot of like the indigenous were as well. Jordan, you know why? Jordan, can, you, can we go here? I don't want to go out. I'm not feeling well. Can we just stay inside? It's getting late. It's too cold. In the room. He, Chelsea was keeping him away from those situations so that nobody, like, people can report on it. Like, these are, I'm telling you, these, and this is not one person's story. I, this is from multiple people who have confirmed this with me. The woman is dangerous. I don't know if she's Tiger Swan or what she is, but I do know she's dangerous. I do know that you don't get extradited back from Me Mexico charges and still maintain your ability to vote. And serve less than like I don't like I don't think she served any time for that particular charge. That's insane. And how do you have her? How does she have her kids still? Like she's she's still the uh, the uh, primary care provider for her children. Like she just leaves them and runs off. Who is paying for them? Well, my question, for I guess, my question regarding. Chelsea is what do you what are your thoughts about the um Jordan's medium article? Uh I I find it well it's not a funny situation but it's funny cuz apparently Chelsea and Jordan didn't really talk that much before he wrote that article and that's before she did that's her apparent. video. Yeah, because she was like, yeah. Uh I did this to Chelsea and she's saying it was consensual. I believe it. I really, truly believe it wasn't. She admitted she was fucked up. She admitted Chelsea was, or excuse me, not Chelsea, excuse me, Carly was wasted. She admitted this. Only had two beers. Once again, the math doesn't even add up because there are four people and they only had two beers apiece. Not sure how that worked out. Nobody's wasting beer. That's um, complete and utter, in my view, yeah. bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it's total bullshit. I tell people, you don't know Millennium 101, you don't have two girls, two guys in a hot tub and only two beers per person involved. It's not how that works, okay? It were probably it's probably closer to Chelsea's story where they were fucked up. Her logic, if I recall, was that yeah, we both confirmed that I, you know she woke up with Jordan and they both confirmed that Carly wanted to do whatever she wanted to do. But Jordan's story is that Ty. Notice Ty hasn't. Ty is saying everything. No, that Chelsea the says, said. Chelsea said that. Well, this is the bizarre thing. I was listening to. Um, the Claudia Stauber interview. So not only does she say we had drinks in the hot tub, which completely destroys Jordan's medium article with a few beers, no, nobody was drunk. Because obviously if you drink even one beer in a hot tub, depending how hot yeah. it is, if, you, if you've eaten that day, you know, you could be screwed. 
uh, inebriated. But she said, and this is where I find that they're both going to probably either betray Ty Bayless. She says that she says with Claudia Stauber, and she basically admits that Carly Hammond was in the bathroom for like a half an hour. Obviously, if you're in the bathroom for a half an hour, even in the best of times, you're not feeling well. Oh, that's so, true. So Chelsea Lyons in, in the Claudia that's Stauber true. interview. Was said, not, yeah, she wasn't just so, drunk. She was wasted. Yeah, of she course. A- anybody would be if you're 21 and you're given drinks in a hot tub, which she explicitly states. Then, then what they do is they blame Ty Bayless for waking up Jordan, which makes no sense because Chelsea says that, oh, then Carly asked Ty to wake up Jordan. You mean the two, w- if if that is even, first of all, no man would wake up. Uh, like man. She was laying in bed with Jordan and then asked Ty to wake up Jordan for her. No, that makes she, no Chelsea, sense. yeah, Chelsea is saying that, Chelsea is saying that. I'm saying it's stupid. It's bullshit. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make, any, make any like. Yeah, no chronological sense whatsoever. Well, but also it doesn't make any sense. Like, why wouldn't the two women who who quote unquote want to be with Jordan wake up Jordan? Why would they ask someone else, a man, to wake up Jordan? Yeah, it, it wouldn't no make any. Especially like she's, she's both admitted to receiving oral sex from Chelsea. So after she was done receiving oral sex, she was like, "Hey, Jordan." Like, because they didn't say that he woke her up. They woke him up, like, before Chelsea get, went down on her. But it, after, it was after. Yeah, well, I mean, that, the thing yeah. is, the, the thing is, what they've done is they've, they have thrown Ty Bayless, who was really bus, stupid in yeah. all of this, because he's lying for them, in my view. He, they've thrown yeah. him under the bus, because now they can conspire against Ty Bayless, and they could say, oh, by the way, at the end moment, at the end moment, they could say it was Ty's idea. And mm-hmm. Ty has admitted to waking up Jordan. And that makes no yeah, sense they could at throw all. Him under the bus. Now, Jordan, legally, Jordan would still be the one who's in trouble, like, if anything happened. But it would make well, Ty of course, of course, but in could, the public they, eye, yeah. in the public eye, and what T.Y., and what that's bigger for is T.Y.T., because it could, you know, end up implicating them. Like, why you fired Jordan but not fired Ty, which is actually was kind of a Ty, Was question. Ty a part of Truth Against the Machine? He did help do some some work for them, according to Jordan. So, um. yeah, they, it's, 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 if they don't fire Ty, actually, at this point, I would be a little weirded out. Not have participated in, in that. He shouldn't have. Like, I've been on a lot of, you know, events and things like that and i'm you know i like them pretty good looking guy pretty well spoken i've been able to avoid hot tub orgies in the middle of the night with half dead half drunk women that i have took complete and total power over the control of their destiny i've been able to avoid that scenario i feel like a lot of other progressive journalists have as well as jordan put but people the, the, make it all kinds yeah. of it it can happen to anybody who else has this happened to but like, that's that's my <laughs> problem with yeah exactly that's my problem with defenders of this the, who what man because there's a lot of guys who put themselves in you know Jordan's situation oh it could happen to me it could happen what man writes a medium article preempting preempting yeah, a woman with in, with this intel Verita from Vo- a support that Verita group Vox woman that Verita Vox website from Ann. She has like a crazy last name, but it's like her name is Ann. Weirdly enough, she's also connected to Sam Ronan. I actually messaged Sam Ronan to like tell him if she tries to offer you advice, don't take it. Do not interact with her because this woman is suspect. Nobody knows who she is, okay? But somehow she managed to attack and create uh, and, and, and do design for Sam Ronan, who for those of you who don't know, one of the candidates for DNC chair, running for Congress or Senate out of Ohio. Big name person was Jordan Sheraton. Those are two pretty damn big people. Who, but I have no idea who this woman is. So how do you get in contact with them? Why are you responding to Tim saying, like, Jordan, Tim asked Jordan to come on his show so he could explain his side of the story because that's just the guy Tim is. Yeah, that's or that's also bizarre. Email, like, why write a medium article but then refuse to go on a forum? And eventually, uh, Julian Assange retweets 
the interview with Carly Hammond, um, which I think is like a phenomenal thing, an amazing thing, uh, because I view Julian Assange to be a hero. That was crazy. I was like, whoa, what? Yeah, like, and I, I think that's amazing. Like but none of this would have taken place had, um, you know, Perry Mason, you know, I call him, this guy is like the legal mind of a peanut. Why would you write a Medium article preempting everything full of lies? Yeah, that's just stupid. Like, wait until you hear Carly's story. Maybe. Like, if you're going to be strategic about it, and like strategic and pragmatic, wait till you hear her side of the story. And then defend yourself, you fucking moron. Like, he's like, I can't believe that clickbait like, and, and the, the social media uh, backlash is what got me fired. I'm like, bro, we didn't even know about any of this until you wrote the Medium article and made a video about it. Z hadn't made a video about it. Nobody, nobody talked about it. We had, who, who was it that showed? Was it you? You, you, I think, was it you eventually sent me the article or maybe Tim's? Or ran, somebody sent me the article. I was like, what? It's like, knower of all things Jordan and TYT because of the people she knows within TYT was like, she didn't even know about this. Nobody knew, wrote the article and could not believe that there was backlash, that there was going to be conversation to do their job, like conversations weren't going to be had. Like the Hold on, I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta read this comment. I gotta love this shit. I loved H.A. Goodman in 2016. Now I watch his videos with disgust. This Jordan Sheridan story will probably be his downfall. Why the fuck would it be my downfall? Number one. Yeah, number, no two, number two. Uh, the, number two, I have a list of people who are too cowardly to talk about this. And maybe in Christmas time, I will um, dis describe the uh, how cowardly they all are within the progressive community who pontificate about Roy Moore and Trump and uh, Harvey mm -hmm. Weinstein and Kevin Spacey. So this is not going to be my downfall. Jordan Sheridan wrote a fucking Medium article. Okay, why don't you read the Medium article, then watch the Claudia Stauber interview. This is anyone, not not the person who wrote that. Read the two, and if it was yeah, a it's weird. Report, I, don't, I don't understand how. So my question to that person would be: How how is reporting uh, a story about a journalist who is under investigation, who lied? First of all, because he lied even in his subsequent article after he got fired. Because they think it's karma. They think, they think it's bad karma for me when the fucking karma is from the medium article, karma, not me reporting not on karma it. Expo it's not bad karma to expose journalists and report on these type of things. Because in your movement, you need to understand how certain people move. And when your movement is being co-opted for someone's personal benefit at the expense of you and your values. Like, that's just, I think that's common sense. You want to be informed about this type of thing. You're like, oh, it's a vendetta. You know what? It, it, you could be right. It is a vendetta in the sense that we've tried to tell you about this, that you should have learned the moment this man did this initial video and he was lying about things he said in the video. He talks about the fact, he said, I've even interviewed H.A. Goodman. But then he turns around and says, I have no idea who the man is. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, then he's, you know, I'm friends with Nico House. Then he pretends like he has no idea who I am outside of watching me on YouTube. Like the dude is a liar. He is a sociopath. And when you have someone like that in a position to lead and is considered in a position of authority, uh, whether it's implied or otherwise, in the progressive movement, has to be held to a higher standard. You're saying this could happen to anybody. Yup, but guess what? When you put yourself in a position, when you put yourself in the public eye, when you consider yourself a public figure, guess what? It can happen to anyone, but it damn sure better not happen to you. Yeah, because but Nico also, also, a preemptive medium article based on intel f from a support group, and then me interviewing Ruel James, Summer Swan, Tara Lee Griffin, Taylor Raines, um, uh, my God, now I'm, I'm missing somebody. This, you know, it, it's it, the Christian chocolates. Now you, then Cindy Gomez Shemp, 
Then I'm speaking to Summer Swan again after Cindy, Cindy uh, Gomez Shemp today. So you have a total, a total of seven people I've interviewed, and that's not even counting the interviews I'm going to that that I'm scheduled in the future. So no, it cannot have the karma is one way. That's what Jordan Sheridan created with his medium post. It is not me. It is not other people reporting or commenting or informing the public. God forbid we inform the public because I can list five, six, seven, eight channels right now that are too fucking cowardly to say mm -hmm. anything. All they want to do is hey, oh Trump because they don't want to be on uh, Roy Moore, all these side. things. They don't want to be on TYT's bad side. They don't want to be on because they had no idea how it was going to turn out. So they didn't want to be on TYT's bad side. They didn't want to be on Jordan's bad side. But I'll tell you this. One single follower because of something Jordan said. I've never lost a subscriber because of a lie Jordan told about me. Because people can check my resume. I'm unbiased. I'm real. You know, you may not like everything I have to say, but you know I'm saying it because it's, I believe it. it there's facts surrounding it. There's statistics behind it. And there's, there's actual experience surrounding it. Jordan... He compared himself to Emmett Till. He compared me being homeless, you know, to, to him living in his car for a couple of days because he was on an internship and was too prideful to ask his parents to help him out while he was doing this internship. That's the type of person he is. I don't feel like like this should be like out of the line. And if, like I said, if you want to call it a vendetta, you're damn sure right. The same way I have a vendetta against Joy Ann Reed. The same way I have a vendetta against Rachel Maddow. The same way I have a vendetta, but, vendetta against Shane. But you Don't know, you know, lie. But you, but you know, Nico, there's a warped notion of karma in this. They're like, oh well, don't pick on him when he's down. It's like, no, 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 no. Not he's, picking on he, him. No, oh, you write the medium article. You we write the medium article. You're fair game. Yeah, well, it, it's not even even about damn near fair game. I don't give a shit about him being down or up or whatever. Because when and he all was at this, his highest, all of this is about he, so one when he woman. was at his highest, it was oh, let it die for the sake of the progressive movement. Now he's at his low due to all of his actions, and now it's don't kick him while he's down. And no, that, I'm going to do the same thing I did, whether he's at his high, whether he's at his low, or whether he's at the meet. I'm going to report the truth. I'm sorry, it's just it's just the way it is. And and you and. Know? And the way the, the whole story, all of this, is really about a woman's experience that she is explaining in Carly Hammond explaining on Tim Black. That's the whole what the whole story and is about. Not just one woman's experience, but the fact that other women who they are not even directly connected to Carly outside of Truth Against the Machine, just being part of Truth Against the Machine, are saying the sim similar things happen according in them. Or Jordan's attempt. The, the same exact pattern. I can make you famous. What are you doing? Join me. I'll take care of you. Like, like having a puppy dog around, you know, the next his next victim. And as soon as they don't, as soon as a woman doesn't do exactly what he wants or has takes issue with the way he acts, or you know, anything like that, he fires them. You know? He did it to another woman who, who, who isn't, I'm going to keep her name anonymous because uh, she just wants to stay out of it. But he did it to another woman that was working for him in New York who did a huge story uh, that somebody else got credit for, by the way. He did it to another woman in Standing Rock who used to do work for him, never gave her credit for it, and kicked her to the curb and became available. And, and before that, there was another woman, very popular social media personality, kicked her to the curb. They all got emails from Jordan, and man, like I said, I have a lot of stuff that I've never have released. It that would have been considered divisive, because at a certain point, it was it exemplified his and demonstrated his predatory behavior and his sociopathic nature. But it wasn't once again conducive to anything in the progressive movement. It wasn't conducive to us moving forward. But now, sex, sexual assault and predatory behavior is a conversation, and now somebody from Jordan's wing has come out and claimed I've experienced and seen the type of characteristics that I've been seeing that people have been telling me that I have not been reporting on because at the time it wasn't appropriate because I do believe that there's a time and a place for everything. You don't come out you know, to, to your battle and shoot all the bullets in your, you know, your, 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 your saw, your machine gun. You have a target 
And right now, the target is sexual assault and conversation that needs to be had, and especially about men, so Jordan, anybody in power, potentially using their position, once again, a position that the patriarch, patriarchy grants due to the fact that men run journalism. You know, we do. Man, it's not the other way around. We, and that's ingrained in our society until we fix that. We cannot allow things like this to take place. Well, without I don't, at I don't, least what, calling what I, it. If he would have, here, hold on, one more thing real quick. If he would have accepted it, you know how much different this entire conversation would be? You know what? Uh, I may have put her in an uncomfortable situation, and I was totally ignorant and unaware of that. I was under the impression that she was attracted to me, that there was a mutual and consensual attraction there. I thought that we were both sexually attracted to each other, although we weren't exclusive. Um, it had been expressed to me in some way due to my past experiences that we are attracted to each other and it was consensual. But if she feels like it was assault and she feels like this was harassment, then I'm sorry. I own up for that and I'll accept my responsibility like a man. That conversation would have been totally different. But to also- that conversation- you would have to be totally selfless and legitimately sincere, and he's not. Well, but, but also what I find just disgusting is that here you have the Young Turks and Cenk Uger. They make their livelihood off pontificating about uh, rape culture and how uh, horrible yeah. conservatives are against women. And then – uh, Jank in his when he fires Jordan, he's like, "Oh, uh, I I respect his privacy, and uh, I don't want to get into the rape allegations because, oh my God, it's like, dude, if this was a conservative, if this was a Breitbart reporter, Jank Uger would be salivating. He'd be frothing at the True. mouth. But I think, but I think because of the, but remember, because a lot of that happened on TYT's dime, and he is not exactly sure what did and what didn't happen on his dime." TYT can be held liable in some way, form, or fashion. You got to remember, one of the Truth Against the Machine, well, no, I can say it because she already implicated herself. So Z Cohen worked for Truth Against the Machine and TYT, and Jordan made sexual advances at her, fired her for reasons unknown, but probably, once again, their relationship got a little rocky because of the, the, their personal when did, know, physical when did Jordan, relationship. When did Jordan fire Z Cohen? Exactly. So I haven't, I haven't um, figured out the exact time, but it couldn't have been that long ago, maybe two, three months ago. So, but this is a person who he brought on to uh, Truth Against the Machine first and then brought on to TYT. Uh, so, it could be a fucking rock slide of lawsuits, accusations, people who may have been fired from TYT that were connected to Jordan got fired because of a personal vendetta, a sexual, sexually driven, like personal vendetta. And, like, that's how what it much could, and that's a problem. And, and how much is being smart? His lawyers told him not to say shit. Who Jordan's lawyers? Time. No, Jank is being smart about yeah. it because his lawyers. Jo probably Jordan told him not Jordan to say apparently shit. went to the law firm of Medium and Medium. So I don't think I don't think <laughs> the fucking law firm of Medium and Medium. But this is this is what I <laughs> this is what I <laughs> this is what I don't understand. What I don't understand is. How much is a fucking hotel room with a hot tub? Even at Best Western or, or Mo, like, I don't know if, I don't think Motel 6 has a, a, hotel, a, a room with, but like, let's say there's a Best Western with us with a hot tub in, in Flint. That has got to be 180, 200 plus a night easily. All mm -hmm. I'm saying is, okay. And then you got, you got, you got the few beers, which is bullshit. And nobody was drunk, which is bullshit, because you're in a hot tub and you're drinking. When you're in a hot tub, you get drunk faster. We already had Chelsea Lyons open her mouth and then completely destroy the Medium article. So my question is, did TYT pay for the hot tub or did Truth Against the Machine pay for the hot tub? Who paid for the mixed drinks? That's Well, I'm going to put it like this. Jane said, he said, I didn't know that um, he was using TYT's brand and even using some of the money to pay for a lot of this stuff. So... With that, he can't say exactly what he wants. But I will say this. Jordan lied and said, oh, I was fired. Jordan and this, like I said, this Ann or this Vox Veritas who's doing a horrible job advising him how to move forward with this. But they said that there was no investigation. And now he's said, going after Jank for the $2 million? <laughs> Yeah, which is weird. But <laughs> that's a whole different decision. But he said, that, he said that Jank did not conduct an investigation which is not true because Jenks said not only do we conduct one, but we actually reached out to you to hear your side of the story, which 
I, okay, I, if he didn't write the media article, I'd be like, yeah, I wouldn't out of what I already told them if I had a lawyer because if yeah, the lawsuit comes would, around you, later, you what? don't want to. I'm but talking if, about just from a strictly pragmatic legal standpoint. You them outside of what you've already told them because conflicting stories can come into play. And if I get fired, I want to have grounds for a lawsuit and recording text message on a voice recording or on a, a, a email correspondence that could stop me from winning that lawsuit later. Now, George is a petty bastard who, who was whining and bitching because he didn't get his way. We know that because, once again, he got asked by Tim Black to go on to his show to explain his side of the story. What did he do? He threatened Tim. Yeah, he threatened Tim and then put out a public letter to threaten him. TYT says, hey, we are doing this internal investigation, even though Jordan tried to lie and pretend like it was, there was no investigation. There was, there was an investigation. Subsequently, fired. But they reached out to him to try to, it would be different if he, they, they never even tried to talk to him about it, but he knew about the investigation, which makes him even more of a snake. So they tried to reach out to him to, to resolve the matter. He did not want to. Well, my and question, then what though, did he do I subsequently? Understand. He wrote another Medium article pretending as if TYT had never reached out to him and that was just, you know, trying to give someone a platform to just purposely smear Jordan Sheraton. When Tim Black had, you know, him and Tim had made up strictly so that he wouldn't keep losing viewers at the rate that he was losing. Because that whole, I mean, if you go to TYT, anytime Jordan shows his face, well, Gary's and obscenities have been are, are are said on his count comment sections because of what he did with me and Tim, and mostly with Tim's fans because you know there's like I said a lot of progressives that still watch his channel. Well, I have uh, this is very interesting. A friend of mine sent me, well, actually tweeted this out, and this is a really really hilarious. Um, I'm going to tweet it out right now. It's okay. The it's Jordan and Nomiki. Uh, Jordan and Nomiki drink to save the Democratic Party. So, Can you believe this shit? What? Yeah, so, so what, what is it? What is it? It's that's the TYT politics. Jordan and Nomiki drink to save the. Oh, Democratic no, it's Party. actually on TYT politics. I just like, retweeted it now. If I'm, if you're on Twitter, if you're watching actually, my segment, if you're watching my interview with Nico House, just just go on my Twitter right on. now. I That's retweeted it is now. Look, I'm yeah, and get this. I'm gonna go on Twitter right now. Hold on, y'all. So, <laughs> this is what kind of what kind of bullshit is this? Like, I don't mind drinking alcohol, but you drink to save the Democratic Party, and then two beers, nobody's drunk. You're a bunch of, in my view, a bunch of fucking liars. The biggest fucking dummy liars on the planet. Jordan and Nomiki drink to save the Democratic Party. And the, the fucking, they look shit, well, Jordan looks shit-faced in this, in my humble view. And then Nomiki is, you know, and this is mixed drinks. This isn't like a Bud Light, okay? And I don't mind, like, I'm not against drinking, you know, I, yeah, responsibly, drink responsibly. I'm not saying you shouldn't drink. What I'm saying is you have right here, this is a culture of, um, TYT politics and Jenky are out in LA discussing the purity test within the Democratic Party. And then when you look at this, it's Jordan has this his like he's like red he got face. The glow on. Yeah, he got the uh, he got the drunk face on. Yeah, he's got Definitely this red face from drinking mixed effing drinks. So like how am I the bad guy in pointing all this out? You know, I, mean, I don't Nothing. And what's what's so funny is actually I don't even I don't even have a problem with him drinking. I don't have a problem with any of that. What I have a problem with is pretending to be holier than thou. But when they're putting donations, I'm sorry. If if they're if they're if they're paying for the margaritas with donations, I'm talking like if it's a TYT. I mean, but I doubt, I doubt that in this particular situation they're paying for margaritas. I I believe that this is probably they were out together in a social event and they were drinking together. And they're like, oh, let's do a video together. And I, I truly, cause like you have to remember too, Nomiki at the time, cause this is when. Let me see when this was. Um, yeah, so definitely at the time, Nomiki had a larger following than Jordan did. So, cause of cause of her little, like I said, she was always ranting, super like pro-Russia conspiracy, 
was on TYT very regularly, main show very regularly, and Jordan is envious. He will either, if he sees you as competition, he will suppress you to make sure that you can't get it right above him. But if he sees you as in a, a chance to expand his brand, then that's, he will throw you on the channel, which, you know, Miki clearly, like, at this weird random opportunity to do so. And, like, whatever. That's perfectly, I, I, I don't even care about him drinking. What I, once again, I care about the fact you pretend to be somebody that you are not. You know, you pretend to. And then there's like, Jordan. Oh, I never Emma drink when I know for a fact that they always get drunk. Like, I know this. And once again, I don't care about you getting drunk. What I care about is you trying to qual like to pre-qualify being true. But there's there's and, another and one factual uh, by saying all oh, yeah, two two beers. Like but, you didn't have only two beers. You never have only two beers. But there's another one which is hilarious. And then uh, my friend just sent this to me. Jordan Emma beers crap on media. What the fuck is going on with like endless? I don't care. See, this is the thing. It's not about the alcohol, people who don't understand karma. Okay. It is about if you have rape allegations that involve drinks in a hot tub, and then you have TYT politics with numerous segments. Oh, I'm so hip and cool, and I'm young and millennial, and I'm drinking mixed drinks, and then I'm drinking beers with Emma. Alcohol is a part of the equation. So don't say nobody's drunk when, like, rosy-faced fucking um, elf is on one of the segments with Nomiki. My thing, so, so, let me, so let me just say this. As far as the karma is concerned, people, you can't, karma, like, like H.A. said, it's, it's one way. It didn't come out of nowhere. You had, at the very, 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 very bare minimum, you had to treat, because let's just say, let's take for, take for that they are trying to conspire against him. They are trying to conspire against TYT. Let's just say that's true. You know, because I do have reason to believe that Jordan's a liar. I do have reason to believe that Grace Santa's a liar as well. Cause she tried to say she, she tried to pretend like she didn't even know Jordan, um, but she's Hold actually on, real in a quick, relationship uh, with Jordan Nico, also. Nico, real quick, do you know when um, the the friend of mine who who just retweeted this information? Do you know what the rebuttal is from um, like the naysayer, the typical skeptical, you know, uh, fucking tyt loyalist? What's that? So the whole thing is Carly Hammond was drunk completely inebriated, wasted because of the drinks in the hot tub. We have now examples of TYT politics with mixed drinks while they're doing the segments. And then one, this one guy on, on the thing says, oh, thank you for that video. It shows clearly that Sheridan is more likable than all of your closeted MAGA fools combined. It's like you're not, people are failing to I put mean, two and two I together. Even, I don't even acknowledge that type of person, though. That's, that's a person who... They only they like the perception of who they think Jordan is like, and with people like that, you like you're just really never gonna win because it's probably more so that they have they take issue with you than they do like Jordan. Like they they have a problem with who's retweeting it because if it was Jake who retweeted it and had a problem with it, they would probably say, "Well, fuck Jordan, I'm with Jake and Tyt." Because there are people who have done that with Tyt. Like if, if Jake doesn't like Ty uh, Jordan Sheridan, then I don't like him either. Because they all have their little, their little groups and they break off into their, their, their sex. And here's what it is. But the karma thing, the very minimum, if that many people are willing to conspire against you, you treated a lot of people wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Even if, let's just take that for true. Like, say they are conspiring against him for whatever reason. You, that means you did a lot. Because what's weird about it is, like, almost all of them exclusively are women because I did I didn't even know I'm not in on it everything I've said has been totally separate from anything that they have been talking about it just so happens that our experiences with Jordans uh outside of obviously he didn't sexually assault me or make any any attempt to make a pass at me not that I'm aware of but um you know the stories as far as our our engagement with him and our experiences with him and description of his characteristics almost match up perfectly it was hard for me to believe. Yeah, I mean that's that, that's the thing. That, you know, that it's not... he is not getting his karma. He's not getting his comeuppance. Like you set the pins up, eventually somebody's gonna knock him down. You don't want him knocked down. 
don't set them up. Well, but, but so and, and, and that's, and that's the thing. People just those people though. You just gotta. And the thing, the thing is, this not it's not like Nico. If you or if, if let's put it this way, we have. I've you're my sixth interview. I'm gonna make, make a. I'm have a playlist, so I will add this interview to the sixth interview. Okay, my seventh different person, seventh different person will be in ten minutes, um, and I, that will be with um, Cindy Gomez Shemp. So seven different people now, and then I'm gonna have the you know pleasure of speaking with Summer Swan again. But seven total different people. Then you get fired. Then Jenk Uger is making the same arguments we're making. So now how how is it that like? How and I just like don't get it in the minds like how is it that people still defend completely Sheridan on this? I don't get it. Anyway, you know what you get because you can't like you can't rationalize with the irrational. <laughs> That's what yeah. it comes down to. If they're loyal to Jordan, there's nothing they're going to that we can say that um he would have to attack them personally. Think about it. There are people who still love Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton does absolutely nothing. Thing for herself. She pretty much makes it pretty explicit that she didn't even go stomping in states that she absolutely needed to win, which means that if y'all, because she made it seem like you needed her as president to avoid what Trump was going to bring, that if she didn't win, that was the end of your world as you knew it. Yeah. To campaign in every state. But there are those loyalists who still love her. Jordan who's in most people's mind isn't as bad as Hillary, of course his loyalists are going to remain that because nobody wants to face themselves looking in the mirror and be like, damn. Because they like, those are the few people who like Jordan for, for what they perceive Jordan to be. And when it comes down to that, you know, just like I have supporters and you have supporters, no matter what you say about any one of us, they could be right about something. It don't matter because I love AJ or I love Nico. Regardless of what you say, I'm going to give take their word over anything else that you can show and, and because they've always been proven to be A, B, C, and D that I agree with. So that's just how, that's how it works. So that's why I don't argue with them per se, the, the, the centrists. I do put out information about this, and the reason I, like, I'm even doing this interview right now is for the centrists. The, oh, let's, let's, he needs due process before we can. Uh, I don't know if you know this, my friends, but. Uh, you, you don't get due process before your ass get fired because the business don't want you anymore. That's not how <laughs> the real world. I, I don't know. Y'all must got some really nice jobs. You can't fire me. I'm, I'm going to go to court for this. You are acting unethically. No, there is a set of bylaws and ethics at every uh, place of employment. Yeah, but you know what? Fire. If you were working, if you were working at a company, and then like at the freaking you know holiday you know dinner, you said, uh, "Hold on, I want to announce formally." that there will be an accusation of sexual assault against me. And I want to let you know that I have screenshots and information that will uh, exonerate me. And, I, and it's a conspiracy against me. Have a nice time. Uh, they're going to fire your ass yeah. right after the holiday party. So it's like. Yeah, I mean, it's true. So I, I just, I just, I mean, they're, the lawyers are going to be the lawyers, but I hope the people who are trying to kind of stand idly by, like it's three main things that people should really take from it. It's like, to figure out how you should feel about it if you're in the middle, right? Tim Black's platform, which is a rather large platform that at that point nobody had actually offered to Carly yet. He offered a large platform to a victim. I don't know whether Jordan's guilty of sexual, explicit and conclusive sexual assault, but we do know that victims all too often do not get hurt. They're, you know, they're ignored. Many people expressed to me how happy they were with Tim for having him. I was proud of him personally for having oh, him. I was, I was that, extremely happy. Once again, whenever Tim, before he had her on, when Tim offered Jordan the chance to come on, not only did Jordan obviously refuse that and threaten him, but he, the, with that threat to sue, he was essentially attempting to silence the victim. Regard, and he you know, did, what he did and was, considers himself a progressive. That's that's what you that if you people who consider themselves progressive problem with that, then you're not you're probably not a progressive. I'm gonna be honest with you. 
So the other, the, the next thing is, um, instead of being honest and upfront, the story actually happened. Because his story conflicts with both Chelsea and Carly in, in the, the, the details, the important details, the amount of alcohol they had, who woke who up, you know, what they were doing. That means he does have something to hide. Whether or not it's actual sexual, actual sexual assault or not, once again, shared to, 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 to decide. But he tried to hide something. So he tried to silence the victim. Then he tried to hide them. And he tried to silence the victim in his article, too, because the whole article was a big-ass gaslighting threat saying, but I, she's married, and I won't put her name out there. Oh, by the way, she had oral sex with, oral sex with Chelsea, uh, but I won't put her name out there if she stays silent, if she yeah. doesn't come out with it. Because he was, he, that his dumbass, once again, because he's reactionary, her coming out. Think just because he knew in his head that it was going to happen, but nobody knew until he wrote that article. Even to have gone yeah. on to the show, if he didn't write that. Like article. I said, it's the law firm of medium and medium. Exactly, and then just lastly, um, as far as how he handles it, how he's handled it after being humble and admitting and owning up to responsibility. As a, as a male, I feel like we have the responsibility that even if someone like we have, may have assaulted them or harassed them because of just the, just the sheer dominance we have over people in situations, especially in a situation like what Jordan is in, where he has more clout as, as in regards to like the establishment side of the progressive wing, the, the upward mobility side of the progressive journalism wing, that careful about how he moves. CEOs have to be careful you know, small, the manager at McDonald's has to be careful with how they conduct themselves in front of their employees and what they do with their employees. Jordan would be no different considering he was the owner of TA, TATM. So if he would have owned up, that's what would a responsible business owner, employer, a responsible mentor would have done. If my mentor or my mentee says, like I was uncomfortable with this situation, then we have to talk about that to figure out what I did wrong, what she may have misconstrued, and how we can move forward from that. But it wasn't ever about employees felt comfortable with the environment that they were in. It was about protecting and growing his own personal brand. Now, if you consider those three things, the way he handled it and the fact that he went and owned up to it, what is there to discuss about his integrity? He's already revealed enough of his integrity that you should be able to make an intelligent and an informed decision. Like, he may not have been all the way guilty, but the motherfucker got to be at least a little bit. <laughs> well, listen, man, Nico, thank you so much. I want everyone watching right now, in a couple of minutes, I want you to keep watching. I'm going to speak to a, a really brilliant journalist, Cindy Gomez-Shemp, who has an amazing show of her own, who has intimate knowledge, uh, a great deal of knowledge regarding Truth Against the Machine, Jordan Sheridan, the Young Turks, so that will be my seventh different person who basically will be saying very similar to the same thing of everyone else I've been interviewing. Uh, so Cindy gomez Shemp will be on in about five or six minutes. Nico, man, thank you so much for taking, what, an hour and a half, you know, with this. Thank you so much, man. We've talked on the phone longer than that, man. It's exactly. <laughs> actually, believe it or not, people, this is actually pretty much how our phone conversations go. It's not an exaggeration. It's just Absolutely. Almost, Probably a little bit more vulgarity from both of us. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, we talk about how much we love y'all. The, the 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 ridiculousness of some of the things that we did. Like this is legitimately the same thing when we have Tim. When I have, I'm on Tim Black show and when Tim's on with H A H A on Tim's. Like this is this is uh, just to make that clear. H A is H A. Flaws and all. Whatever you got negative to say about him or myself or Tim. Flaws and all. This is who we are. There is no facade behind the camera. There is no Mikasa, Sukasa, Nico, and then Tim Black show, Tim Black. And it's, this is just who we are. And I think that there's it, the realness of per, certain progressives or certain journalists in the community. Because even a lot of, with the conservatives, they are putting on a facade for, for how extremely conservative they are sometimes because they like conservatives on YouTube specifically love affirmation and they will put on a facade. But HA, myself, you know, a few others. This is who we are. And I think that 
journalism in journalism should be more respected because going forward, when you're trying to figure out, are they trying to persuade me because they want the girl to grow their brand and they want clicks or are they trying to persuade me or, or trying to influence me to make informed decisions and have information that's necessary for me to be educated or aware of issues because that's the right thing to do. And that's what journalism is. I think that's very, that's like the big picture when we're talking about this Jordan situation and how we talk about how you feel about particular journalists as well. But thanks for having me on, man. I really, really Thank appreciate you, it. Yeah, follow my channel, people. Go to my YouTube channel if you're, if you're you know, before y'all. If you're watching on, this, I want you please all, all 500, there's 451 now, but it reached saw, like 500. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I want you all to subscribe to Nico House's channel. Subscribe to Tim Black. Um, but, you know, watch Nico House. His, his channel is amazing. Thank you, Nico, for everything. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, you talk so to you soon, man. Talk to you soon.